Good afternoon, everyone. I am Derek Douglas, Vice President for Civic Engagement at the University of Chicago. And on behalf of the university and the many community partners we have collaborated with throughout this process, I want to thank the Chicago Park District and the City of Chicago for this opportunity to share important information about the effort to bring the Barack Obama Presidential Center to the south side of Chicago. At the outset, I wanted to provide some background information on what a presidential library is. A presidential library has three parts. There's the museum, which contains the artifacts um, from the presidency, a library, which contains the archives and the papers of the president. Both of those are run by the National Archives and Records Administration, which is part of the federal government. The third piece is an independent presidential foundation, which is responsible for raising the money for building the library and turning it over to the federal government. The foundation is also usually where the president and first lady conduct their post-presidential work. The University of Chicago will not own or operate parkland or the presidential library. On the contrary, the university is offering land that it owns as part of the proposal. Any parkland that the city of Chicago makes available for the library will remain a public asset. The presidential center and library represents a unique and historic opportunity for our city, particularly for the South Side, the place the President and First Lady call home. This will be the first truly urban presidential library, which means it will have greater impact on economic development, culture, and education than any presidential library before it. It will also touch many more people, especially local residents. We want these economic, cultural, and educational benefits for Chicago and for the South Side. Our youth in particular would be inspired by this library, which will pay tribute to a president who lived, worked, and began his political career in the same communities where they live, play, and go to school. Over the past year, we have been working to ensure that the South Side effort is a collaborative one that reflects input from the local community and the city. We have talked with hundreds of individuals and groups in more than 150 meetings, as, as well as with our local electeds and representatives from the city and the Barack Obama Foundation. The feedback we received from the community has been hugely important in shaping the sites we propose to the foundation. Community members told us the presidential center should go in a neighborhood where it can bring the most economic benefit. That led us away from university-owned property in Hyde Park, which is the, where the bulk of the university's land is. We also heard from the community that it was important that current residents not be displaced by the library, but rather that they should benefit from the library. While there are vacant lots in Woodlawn and Washington Park, there is not a 20 to 30 acre parcel of contiguous land to house the Presidential Center campus. Over the course of the past year, our conversations with the community and the foundation included the discussion of more than a dozen potential locations for the Presidential Library. However, as we have progressed through the process, the foundation has expressed strongest interest in two particular sites, one in the Washington Park neighborhood, which includes land owned by the university, and the other in Woodlawn. Thus, to be clear, the reason the two Southside sites that we are discussing today are finalists in this process is because that is the direct feedback we got from the Obama Foundation. The university and the city did not select these sites to be the finalists. The Obama Foundation did. Locating the Obama Presidential Center in either Washington Park or Woodlawn would drive major investments and growth, providing an unprecedented boost to the economy on the South Side. Last year, we commissioned an independent firm to analyze the library's potential economic impact. They found that the library would result in direct investment of about $600 million, draw 800,000 annual visitors to the South Side, create nearly 3,300 local construction jobs, create 1,900 new permanent local jobs through the library, the museum, and the creation of new businesses help to create at least 40 new stores, restaurants, and a hotel in neighborhoods near the library, have an annual economic impact 
of at least $220 million a year, increase local earnings by $56 million a year, and increase tax revenue for the city of, and Chicago public schools by $3 million a year. In a word, it would be transformative for our community. Along with these economic benefits, the Obama Presidential Center would bring a major new cultural offering to the South Side. It would enhance local cultural organizations and create educational experiences for our young people. The Presidential Center would become a jewel in the Museum Campus South Network, which includes the Museum of Science and Industry, the DuSable Museum of African American History, and other South Side cultural institutions. As a new destination for school children across the city and for visitors from around the world, the Presidential Center would draw from and enhance traffic to these strong institutions, bringing a much needed boost in tourism to the area. We've talked to various civic and community organizations, including museums, nonprofits, and other universities, and they have presented a wealth of ideas for programmatic collaborations with the Presidential Center. These ideas include providing new programming for local schools in areas such as science, technology, engineering, and math, enhancing the work of local nonprofits serving youth through free tutoring, nutrition, education, and recreation, exploring ways to offer new opportunities for a range of community residents, such as through urban agriculture, workforce training, and options for ex-offenders. These and other ideas support the priorities of the President and the First Lady in critical areas including education, health, and economic development. So in closing, the Barack Obama Presidential Center offers a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the city of Chicago and our local communities. We owe it to future generations to do all we can to ensure that this opportunity is fulfilled. Chicago is competing with New York and Hawaii for the library, and the final decision on where to locate it will be up to the president and the First Lady and their family. The University of Chicago wants to support whatever Chicago location the President and the First Lady choose to make, to honor the legacy of their work. We also want to solidify a proposal that makes it most likely that they will select the library on the south side of Chicago. We believe either of the proposed sites in Washington Park and Woodlawn would accomplish this. With that, I would now like to ask Phil Enquist of Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill to provide more detail on the two proposed sites. Good afternoon. I'm going to take five minutes and walk you through nine slides that will show you these sites that are proposed and why we think they are so important to this presidential center, the South Side communities, the park system, the city as a whole, and the nation. As Derek noted, we are responding to the Barack Obama Foundation's request that we put forward our best possible sites for the Presidential Center. We want to make it clear to the Foundation to choose Chicago and specifically the South Side. The image you see on the screen shows the two sites in context with the surrounding neighborhoods and the historic Olmsted Parks. It highlights that this will be the first urban presidential library engaging directly with and creating opportunities for the neighboring communities and the parks. We know the president and first lady are deeply interested and committed to health, education, culture, food, and the restoration of the environment. These sites can directly support the kinds of programs we can imagine being developed at the presidential center. Locating the Obama Presidential Center in one of these great historic parks can provide a remarkable opportunity for a remarkable partnership. Think of how this center can activate these parks. So this diagram uh, shows the center within Jackson Park along Stony Island and in Washington Park along King Drive at the intersection with Garfield Boulevard. The Washington Park site also includes a parcel of university and city-owned land that is across the street to the west of King Drive that includes also the CTA uh, 55th Street Green Line Station. The foundation could also choose to build 
uh, the center on this land as well. The Presidential Center will spark programming that will help to activate the entire park system and invite the world to visit as this park system has done in the past with the Columbian Exposition. The Presidential Center can potentially become a gateway, possibly even an international visitor center into this historic Chicago park system. At this stage, we don't yet know the number of buildings, the design of the buildings, where they will be located, or exactly how much space they will occupy. This slide offers a diagram, a closer look, at the likely scale of the buildings in relationship to the site area that's being defined within each park. So on the right is the Jackson Park site defined by Stony Island, Hayes, and Cornell Avenue. And on the left is the Washington Park site defined by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Ellsworth Drive, Garfield Boulevard, 54th Street, and Prairie Avenue, because it does include the CTA Green Line Station. The Washington Park site does not touch or impact the Diet School. Uh, this was a question last night, so we wanted to respond to that. The Presidential Center and the Diet School could certainly partner in a remarkable way. Now, to give you an idea of benchmarking with other presidential libraries, we thought this might be helpful. So you can see the Lyndon B. Johnson Library on the far left. The site is 30 acres in size. The building is only four acres in size. The rest are gardens, public gardens. The Jimmy Carter Library and Museum, the site is similar. It's 35 acres. Building is 2.5 acres. The William Clinton Library and Museum, the site is 38 acres. Building, 2 acres. The George W. Bush Library, site, 23 acres. The building footprint is 3 <coughs> acres. Now, this presidential center may be very different, but we thought these were good benchmarks to give you a sense of how much building could be in the park, which is really around a three acre size. Chicago is, as you all know, the center of the country, and these sites are in a center of a very active transportation network. Because of this urban location, Experts are estimating the library will see about 800,000 visitors a year. Getting to the Presidential Library by public transit is really critical. The Washington Park site is adjacent to the CTA Green Line 55th Street Station, which really underlines how this could be an urban presidential center. The Jackson Park site is adjacent to the Metro Electric Line 59th 60th Street Station and also close to the 63rd Street Station. Station improvements will also help bring more people to the park system and connect the south side in an easier, more convenient way than today into downtown. In addition, these sites are easy for visitors to access by car via the Dan Ryan, Lakeshore Drive, Garfield Boulevard, Stony Island Avenue, Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. Both of these sites are critical crossroads in the city, and both of them are very important gateways. They also link well to the international airports. Visitors will provide growth for local businesses, enlivening the commercial corridors. We have some very strong historic commercial corridors here. What the Washington Park site will enliven Garfield Boulevard. The Jackson Park site will enliven Stony Island Avenue and 63rd Street. These two sites are, are located among a number of great educational institutions. The Presidential Center would partner with these schools and others across the city to expand and enrich educational programming. The last slide I want to show, I think, is really an important one. Both potential sites would also complement a growing number of cultural organizations on the south side. This slide indicates the cultural institutions that are located in or near the Jackson Park and Washington Park sites. And you can see the library presidential center would strengthen this ribbon, this cultural ribbon of assets 
A Southside Museum campus is forming. The Presidential Center would add strength to that idea as well. In summary, and speaking very personally, there's a power and a global significance to these two park sites that make them appropriate ground upon which to set this historically unique American president's enduring footprint. Thank you.